Hello everybody, my name is Al DePaulo and I'm the Partner Products Manager and today I wanted to take a look at uh, a topic that recently came up which was working with splines and um, you know cleaning up geometry and exploding geometry so I'm gonna get right into it what I have here is a six by six part I got my uh, origin or my machine set up and I'm gonna look at the spline menu now we do have a couple of different types of splines we have uh, interpolated uh, fit spline and blended spline uh, they can be used in a couple of different ways I'll use the interpolated one first if you uh, use the interpolated spline. The spline will go through the control point that you generate. Okay, so that's uh, an example of uh, an interpolated spline. If you use a fitted spline or a fit spline, then the spline will be <clears throat> tangent to the control point that you generate. And uh, if you use a blended spline, uh, this is typ uh, typically used to uh, generate a blend between two curves. Uh, it's kind of useful, uh, not always predictable for myself, but uh, as far as getting it to do what you want, you can see on one side it went one way and on, an on another side it went another way. Now, all right, so we have some spline geometry here. How do you know you're working with a spline? Well, there's a couple of ways. You can right click and go to Entity Summary, and this will give you a count of all the entities that you're working with. So I have some lines and I also have some splines. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can verify your geometry. If you go to uh, measure entity and you click on an entity, it will tell you that it's a spline curve. Okay. Now, if you want to edit your spline <clears throat> or make adjustments to it, you can go to selection mode, you can click on the spline, you can right click and you can go to entity modify and then it will provide you some uh, control points which you can use to uh, edit your spline which is uh, which can be useful uh, the other way that you can do this as well is you can go to utilities and then you can go to deform and this gives you the ability to pull and tug on your splines as well now um, <clears throat> now that we have this spline curve here it really doesn't matter they come in all different forms and they're used in a variety of different ways but what I want to do is just set up a, a profile routine on this real quick so we're gonna do profiling and uh, we're gonna select the spline um, we're not gonna offset we're gonna just be right on it and we're just gonna go down some amount and we'll compute. So now we've taken the spline and we've generated toolpath for it and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post up my code for this and you're gonna notice that this spline is it's in uh, it's really exploded or interpolated in the background and it's broken up into a series of arc or line segments uh, in this case this spline uh, total when we cut this it has hundred and thirty lines of code okay so what we're gonna look at doing now is this is currently a spline curve what we want to do is explode it and exploding you can use uh, for text you can use it for curves or spline curves uh, under utilities you have an explode option uh, you have two different uh, options whether you're gonna uh, explode lines or explode arcs and then you have selection masks uh, which allow you to determine what would be uh, used uh, or or selected uh, you can exclude different uh, you could exclude text or exclude arcs uh, or just do text so you can window pick and things like that so in this example I'm gonna do uh, accuracy I have my accuracy I have it set as as lines I'll window all this geometry in and then at this point I've broken this spline up into a ton of little tiny points okay so now if I went ahead and reselected this geometry and recomputed it and then posted instead of the 155 lines that we had before now we have uh, 296 uh, you'll also notice that all the movements were made up as line movements instead of as arc movements like it was before so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo my explode as lines you can see I have my splines again and then I'm gonna do utilities explode and I'm gonna choose arcs and then I'll window in the geometry, right click OK. I'll go ahead and reselect 
my little path here and then I will recompute and then I will repost and then now we're gonna see that this actually is made up of 79 lines of code or 80 lines of code so when when the software is working with a spline there's a tolerance in the background that it quote unquote explodes it or interpolates it in the background uh, in making it into uh, a series of liner arc segments. So uh, this is a default tolerance and you can adjust it. Uh, typically we don't recommend that you do, but you can. Uh, the other option that we had here is when we exploded this, we exploded it as lines to begin with and then we had, you know, 200 and some odd lines of code when we when we posted out our program when we exploded it as arcs we actually broke it up into larger arc segments and we actually had less lines of code by exploding our geometry now what I want to do here is I want to undo this real quick and I'm gonna go back to these uh, spline segments and what I'm gonna do is explode this as lines again because we have another tool that if you are dealing with a series of line segments like I have now I can actually do my entity summary here and it will tell me I have 288 line segments. Sometimes you want to try to fit a series of arc segments through there instead of line segments. So we do have a tool for that. It's called arc fit or fit arcs and it again it has a tolerance and you can window in this spline and then what that will do is convert those series of arc segments or a series of line segments into arcs based off of a filter. So this is yet another way in which you can take a spline, explode it, and then um, you know clean it up, clean up that geometry uh, either as a series of line segments, a series of arc segments. Um, you know, again, these are just different cleanup options that you have. This time, again, I uh, exploded it into line segments, and then I uh, ran an arc filter on it, and I came out at 90 lines of code. So you could see either the default uh, setting, uh, machining the spline directly, or exploding with lines, uh, how many lines of code you get, or exploding with arcs and how we had fewer lines of code or exploding with lines and then converting to arcs. So you have a couple of different options there. Now, one of the other things that I, I want to cover real quick when we're dealing with geometry is I'm going to take this uh, rectangle here and I'm going to do uh, a translate and I'm going to just move it up one inch and I'm going to make a copy. And this actually comes up uh, quite often where you have a copy um, and I'm actually going to take this geometry down uh, I'm not going to copy it, I'm just going to move it down. So basically I have lines on top of lines, okay? Now it's very difficult to be able to tell this in a lot of situations. One of the ways you can do it is you can select the line and delete and then you notice that the line is still there. Uh, we do have a cleanup tool for this. You go to utilities, reorganize, and you have erase doubles. And by utilizing this feature here, you can remove the double entities. Now there's a caveat that I want to go through there. You can see now I only have one line segment instead of two, but there is a caveat because in order it in order for it to erase the doubles, it actually the endpoints of the lines for the double entities have to be in the same spot. So in other words, let me undo here, undo here. I'm gonna take this line and uh I'm going to just change this to X5 and X1. Okay, so now you can see that the endpoints aren't connected there. And then I'll uh, translate this back down. Okay, so now if I try to run my e, uh, erase doubles on this, it's going to erase the doubles on all the other sides. You can see there's only one there, only one there, only one there. But guess what? Here there's going to be two because the endpoints don't meet up. So the erase double entities only works with when you have uh, 
the endpoints of the entities are in the same position. Okay, so that's another cleanup uh, information. There are some other cleanup options in here. Uh, make arcs tangential. There's also a cleanup and optimize. Uh, cleanup and optimize is used for, you know, I have this, um, let's go back here. So I have this uh, line segment. It's a single line segment. Okay, sometimes that line will get broken. Uh, we have tools to break it. You have utilities, break, uh, divide. I can make this into uh, 10 pieces. So we'll say that one, that one, and that one. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and remove my uh, outside, uh, uh, my inside shape. I'm going to select just my outside shape here, compute and post and you're gonna see that we have um, you know a couple of different lines of code uh, I'm not sure it may actually be optimizing it in the background but you can see how there's a bunch of different line segments here um, with the the cleanup and optimize does clean up and optimize what it will do is it will take all those individual segments and they'll it will make it back into a single segment see how it did that and let me uh, Reselect my code. I'm not sure. It looks like it might be optimizing that already. Yeah, we have uh, actually in the background, you can see that either way, uh, we had 18 lines of code there either way. In the background, the software is actually optimizing it automatically, so you don't get a bunch of little line segments start and ends if they're all in a line. So that was a really neat feature as well. Um, so again, I just wanted to touch in real quick about working with splines, exploding splines, the effect that it has on your code, ways to clean up the splines. Uh, hopefully you find this information useful. And, um, you know, until the next one. Thanks a lot, guys.